Hello and welcome to another live TD tutorial. Uh, today this one's going to be a little bit different because we're actually going to be looking at part separation. So this is before you actually get into live 2D proper, when you've got your model all made and drawn. How should you be separating this? Well, let's have a look. So the first very important tip is make sure that you're naming your layers. The layer names will carry over into live 2D, so it'd be a lot easier to tell what part you're looking at if you've got it all named up all nicely. So we can have a look here. My naming convention is very strange to some people. <laughs> so I have the main tail here, for example, tail end, tail fluff, and then for the back hair, I've got them named into individual numbered parts. You might want to call them something different. I wouldn't recommend following my process because my brain is uh... <laughs> so you notice that I have everything neatly folded up. This is just for organisation. You should try and keep yourself as organised as possible just so you know what you're looking for and it's a lot easier to separate things and find where things are later on if you need to tweak anything. Now just a little disclaimer, the, this model has about 237 layers um, and I'm going to gloss over a few of them. Uh, the reason is most of them are highlight or shading layers. This is particularly because I like to have them move separately in Live 2D because it gives you more manipulation over the 3D look if the highlight and shadow can move on its own. But as a beginner, it's perfectly fine to keep them merged with the actual hair or body layers that they belong to um, because that's going to be a lot more work. So one thing to bear in mind is when you're cutting you need to bear in mind which side is your left side and which side is your right side. And this is going to be from your model's point of view. So this is the left side and this is the right side. But this is going to be important in Live 2D later, otherwise you're going to have mismatch blinking. So I can't wait today, jeez. <laughs> Alright, so let's start going through our layers. Um, some stuff I'll just go quickly because they're pretty self-explanatory um, and I'll try and be brief as much as possible. So first we've got our eyebrows, left and right, pretty self-explanatory there. So we have our fringe and I actually keep this highlight on a separate, separate layer here, this top highlight. But as I said, if you're new, perfectly fine. It's also perfectly fine to keep the whole fringe, so this part here, as a single layer, especially if you're new. The reason why I have it separated like this, so individual bangs, is so later on when you pull it into Live 2D, you can manipulate each bang individually to give it a little bit more unique movement. And then it's the same for the side pieces of hair. So this part here, and uh, they are separated. So I've got a head tuft one. You could put these bits together, for example. I'm just a bit complicated. <laughs> and one thing I do recommend is this phase shader part. So I have this part, this part, and this part. And if I show you under the fringe, this phase shader top actually covers most of the head just so we don't get any blank space later on. I like to have these separate so that you can manipulate it as the hair moves. So you see that when my hair moves, the shaders on my face also move, because you can link those to the physics later. So we have horn left, horn right, and remember these should always extend down. So under the fringe here you can see the hidden part. Same for the ears, left and right. And for the ears as well, I have the fluff part separated. This is so you could have a bit more unique movement on the ears so the fluff can move. Because I like having a little bit of delay on the fluff. Just so it looks a bit more floofy later on. <laughs> so the eyes are going to be a little bit more complicated. So if we open up this folder here, first of all we have 
a tear because sad emotes. <laughs> now for eye parts, um, on this model I'm using right now, the eyelash is one single piece, so it goes all the way around in a circle. But for this model she has more anime styled eyes, so she's going to have eyelash top, the eyelash bottom, and the side. And this will allow for a bit of manipulation later on. Also in particular for the eyes, I like to separate all of the sparkly parts. <laughs> this will allow for better physics manipulation later on. If you're new, you probably don't need to worry about it too much, but I might as well show it off just in case I include it in my physics video later on. Alright, so I take it a step further, I have all of these little sparkly parts including this shine part at the top. They're all separate. And it's because I like to add the the bounce on the eye blink, and I also like to move them around the eye to make it look a bit more 3D. Because these shine parts, the shimmery parts, shouldn't be leaving the eye white area. So if you move the whole eye as one object, then it tends to clip out of the eye. I wish I could explain that better. <laughs> But if you're new, um, don't worry about it too much, unless you want to add a little extra bit of depth, black work for yourself. <laughs> and then I have the iris layered up. Obviously, if you want a special pupil like heart eyes, then obviously add that above your on your iris folder. But these bits pretty self-explanatory. We have the pupil parts and the iris, and then the eye white. It's pretty explanatory. White. <laughs> so then I also have a folder for face expressions. Um, these are gonna be my things like scared. Oh, this is when I am hiding from the ghost and phasmophobia. And then we also have angry. Uh, the nose. That's just a self-explanatory part. So now for the mouth parts. There are plenty of tutorials out there which show off these mouth pieces and how to separate them. So I'll only go over this briefly. I will link in the description a really good one uh, from Kira Omori. Um, she was actually the person who like got me into Live 2D with her tutorials, so recommend checking her out. So the mouth here. So we're gonna ignore all these extra parts because they're mostly for extra pieces I added in. So for the base mouth parts, we're gonna have the upper lip. And with the upper lip, you want to make sure that you have this skin here. And the same for the lower lip, so that you can cover this mouth part on the inside. And then with the teeth, I have a lot of extra teeth on this model. So ordinarily you would only have upper and lower teeth. Upper teeth and lower teeth. You may also want the side teeth. If you're going to be moving around from side to side, you can manipulate them to make the mouth look a bit more 3D. So those are the extra parts that I have here. And then obviously you're going to want the inner mouth part and the tongue as well. If you want to add a tongue out parameter, which I believe you can use with iPhone or you could have it as a toggle. So I would have it blend into the tongue here. So obviously next we have the face here. That's just, that's just the face. Nothing more to say about that. <laughs> and then we have the side hair as well left and right. So let's move on to the body now. So I have this separated into folders, so we have the turtle neck part and this is gonna have the front part, the actual neck itself, and the back. And always making sure that there's this empty space filled in here, as well as on the neck here. So there's always gonna be parts that you can't see but they're gonna be important in Live 2D. Moving on to our torso here. Now this model has very strange clothing, I must admit, but we'll just go over some basic parts. So this top part is just covering this top part of the bust. So we have a bust, a torso, and a midriff on mine. The bust is above these two parts. So the bust is going to be this bit here, which is the, uh, the booba. <laughs> So if I drag that off, here we are. And this has its own shader on the top and bottom. Because as the um, 
physics happen, this shader can move up and down to make it look a bit more bouncy. <laughs> and obviously you're going to need the shader on the midriff as well. So that's this part. And that's under the bust. And this is going to have its own shader as well. But you could keep this merged. It's more important on the actual bust itself if you want to get that really bouncy feeling. Um, Carla doesn't have a bust, so... <laughs> I can't show it off on here. So the way I like to do shorts is this top part is its own piece. The middle is its own piece. But it's actually also separated from left to right to allow better manipulation later on. So right side and left side. So now for the arms. Um, I have a very specific way of doing the arms and this is set up specifically for animation. Um, obviously I like to have waves and there is a specific way I do this. There is an alternative method which I could show up in a moment as well. So let's see how I've separated these. Obviously this character has these bottom sleeves so that is going to be its own part. Oh, and you may notice there's a little bit of finger showing through. That's because I'm going to have this character's sleeves pull up when she lifts her arm so she can wave properly. So you're always going to want to make sure that you draw in the parts that may not be visible on the actual PNG, but will be visible on an animation for example. So we have this separated into lower arm and upper arm. So our lower arm here and our upper arm. And you may notice that there is an overlap here because this is to allow it when this part rotates there won't be an awkward cut off and it will look more like an elbow. There's also a method of doing this by drawing in its own arm at the top. Let me grab up Berwin. So with Berwin here, instead of using that method, I just drew on its own upper arm. So you can make this appear basically and then have it wave that way. But on this model and my model as well, we wave by rotating our arm. Oh, one more important thing as well with hands. Um, you're going to want to have alternative hands if you're thinking of adding something like a wave animation. So as you can see, my hand right here is in neutral position. But obviously it's not going to be in that position when I actually wave it. So I actually have an open version. And this is the same for this model. My hands are not ordinarily open like this. <laughs> so next, let's move on to the leg pieces here. Now it's perfectly fine to just keep the shoes on one layer. Not many people are going to be seeing your legs on your model most of the time anyway, as you can tell. Most of it is mostly the bust up, but I do recommend having the thigh, if you're going for full body this is, the thigh and the lower leg separated, and don't forget to fill in that blank space, just so it's easier to animate later on. So I will briefly cover the wings on this one, just in case it ever comes up. So the way I've drawn these wings is there's a top part here, and then there's a bottom part. But keeping this top part separate is good because you can have this top part flap more rather than just having it all as one object, in which case it would deform really weirdly at this corner here. Uh, for the back of the hair here, this character has long hair, so we're going to want to extend this up a little bit as well, making sure to always fill in those blank spaces. But for the back hair in particular, I have one proper back hair piece, and then these extra parts layered on top, just to add a little bit more movement later on. And then finally we have this long tail! So there's a few different ways of doing tails, but I'll generally have it as one part, which is this part. But for this particular one, I've actually added these extra fluff parts on their own layer, just so it can uh, look a bit more floofy as it moves around. But the reason why I've kept it as one part is because I intend to use skinning on it, which means I'm not going to actually manipulate much of the individual parts. So keep it simple. So that was just a brief overview on how I cut some of my models. Uh, this one hasn't been rigged yet. This is actually a little sneak peek at what's to come. Uh, this is my human model, Alfie. Um, the real cutie dragon, because <laughs> obviously the cat you see here is Tala, the Margate. 
But hopefully this might explain a little bit into my process into cutting and it might even help you, possibly. If it was helpful, uh, feel free to give us a like and subscribe for more tutorials. I will have more coming soon. I am already planning to do a waving animation tutorial off this one. So things like this. And it should also introduce the basics of animation in Live 2D to you guys as well. So look forward to that. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day and have fun in Live 2D as always. And bye bye.